Hi, I'm Brian Keith Dalton, and I took a left at the valley. I know we shouldn't have to scream that we're atheists. You know, we don't have non-astrologers and all that. But with the religious people taking over the world, I mean, we can either speak up or be pushed into a corner. I'm proud of being an atheist, a skeptic, a non-believer, an infidel, a heathen. I call it how I see it. I say it's ignorance, and you just call it faith and unsubstantiated claims. That's something to be ashamed. I'm an atheist. From surprisingly sunny BC, this is Left of the Valley. My name is Kevin, and on Halloween, parents send their kids out looking like me. Uh, yes, you're the booty man. <laughs> Joining me as usual is a team that will tell you that a gentleman always remembers a woman's birthday, but never her age. Smart. That's a wise gentleman. It is. Only problem is, I don't remember my age sometimes, so <laughs> we're all out of luck. She wonders at what age is it appropriate to tell her the dog that he's adopted. <laughs> Never. He's Never. a good boy. <laughs> and she wonders if the skulls of her enemies are dishwasher safe. Kirsten. Mm, I think they hand wash. I think hand wash as well. That's a lot of small bits. Ladies, welcome back. Good to be here. I hope you had a great week. We're gonna have a we're gonna have an interesting show today because today we'll be talking to Damien Damien Lee Thor of the group Predator, a heavy metal group. So that's gonna be very very interesting. But first, let's do our usual chit chat. And hear our wonderful voices. I had, I went to Fan Expo last weekend. Yeah. Kirsten, I know you went too. Yes, I did. What were your impressions? Um. For me, it was the first time I went to a thing like that. Oh, totally. it, but I enjoyed it. Um, I, I feel that. I feel this year it was a little bit smaller. I know they had it over in the West Hall this yeah, year. Yeah, um, yeah. The first year I went, they had it over there, but they had more. They had, I think, two levels to do it in. I feel like this year maybe it got a little bit too many things booked up at once. Um, so I feel like they didn't get as much space. For, well, for, for me, like I said, it's the first time I went to one of these things, and I went for only one reason, really. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I went because I wanted to meet my uh, Your hero? children yes. uh, idol, uh, Lou Ferrigno, the Incredible Hulk. So I can't believe I actually got to shake the hand of... What? You destroyed my place? No, I dropped my phone. Oh, again. And I scared myself. <laughs> like, like last week. <laughs> so... That was kind of cool. That we get to shake yeah. the hand, and uh, you actually got a picture of him. I love the in a pictures. <laughs> you know, I'm starting oh, to think you got a bit, a bit of a kink there for the chokehold, Kevin. Uh, I, I, you know, I hate pictures where everybody stands up and smile. I hate that. There needs to be action, and I don't know. It seems to make people laugh when people are beating me up for some reason. Yeah. So <laughs> the chokehold thing works. But overall, it was. Amazing, it and was, also got to talk to some of our favorite art creators, Fabled Creative. Yeah. Go check them out. I saw Science a lot of pictures. that. A lot of these artists, and uh, this whole the impression I got is this whole thing is really designed to make you spend a lot of money. Yes, My God, you don't but want to know ever. how much money we spent there last year. No, I don't. The funny thing I is, spent though, too much money on this is you actually you a lot of the time the artists will get you'll get discounts on what you're buying there so if you actually yeah. were to buy them from like their site or their actual like in store you'll be paying more yeah. I, I went with my daughter and uh, I happened to buy her one of those entire Harry Potter outfits with a, her, <laughs> with a Hermione wand and I, said, I thought to myself Christina would be so proud right now she I was am. here <laughs> I am very. What, what house is she in? Oh, oh God! Of course, she went for Gryffindor, right? Uh, of course, right? Nobody goes for something else. Um, we are both me. Hufflepuff. Thank you very much. I don't know. Hufflepuff is the best. Oh, okay. I, I'm in. And the, now we can I'm Hufflepuff. in the platypus house. I'm in the platypus house. And uh, I got to give a shout out to a gentleman that was there who actually happened to be a listener. <gasps> really? This gentleman. This is. Uh, did he heads recognize up to, you? He did. <gasps> well, not not from the picture, but I I told him, uh, you know. Uh, this guy is uh, his name is Jackson, and uh, hello he, Jackson, hello Jackson, hello. right? Uh, shout out to Jackson, and uh, he he does kilt, <gasps> right? They do custom oh, kilts and stuff like oh, that. Oh, oh, oh. I, I think I saw something about that. Did, was he? Did he mention something on Facebook? Well, sort of. Uh, something. I was wearing my, my T-shirt that Anthony Magnabasco sent me. Said Ooh. street epistemologist. Let's talk nice. about how we know stuff. He looks at my T-shirt. He says, "I love that T-shirt." He says, "That reminds me of a guy." Uh, and I said, "Anthony Magnabasco." He says, "Yes, exactly." 
And and then we started talking, and, and I I told him, you know, he, he revealed he was an atheist, and I said, oh, it's cool, we should have you on the show one of these days. I said, what's your podcast? I said, well, it's called Left in the Valley. He said, I listened to that show. <laughs> so, <laughs> People actually listen. So, People at home actually listen. <laughs> he's from he's from Victoria, so shout out to Jackson. Yeah. It was great meeting you, buddy, and I sure hope we can uh, talk again soon. Okay, moving on. Um, did you guys hear that uh, global warming was going to make beer scarcer and more expensive? Yes, I saw that link. <laughs> There's a UN report saying that beer, chocolate, coffee, and wine no. No. is going to be affected. No. no. Why did you leave a beer? We should be talking about coffee's going to be... <laughs> well, you Not know what? If that doesn't coffee. get people moving on climate coffee. change, nothing will. No. Beer, chocolate, I coffee, and coffee. wine are like the top four That's things how people we need. That's how we cope with life. This, That's how America goes. This would hurt the production of barley, which of course is heat sensitive. Uh, they estimate the loss of about seventeen percent, oh, which coffee. would price would double the price of beer. No, well, beer, no coffee. Well, coffee, coffee is probably going to have a similar fate. I don't have the stats for coffee. Coffee, coffee. I don't drink beer, so I'm not super attached. But, but coffee, coffee. <laughs> I literally chocolate. drink. I actually don't like chocolate. What? I love chocolate. Okay, You're there's fired. a story so behind fired. this, though, because I grew up, my dad worked at a chocolate factory. Oh, okay, well, fair enough. So, so she got he, overloaded. She got Phil. boxes <laughs> and boxes of the chocolate that wasn't perfect, so I got overloaded. And you yeah, never I shared it. That. I can understand. I didn't know you. Did you guys hear, uh, did you guys hear about Hyperloop One? No. no. Hyperloop One is the, uh, from the Virgin, uh, the Richard Branson? Remember the millionaire Richard Branson with the Virgin Company? It's a Not high-speed sure. train. And uh, they've been in negotiations with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Gross. But now Branson um, has announced that he might halt investment. Good. Because of the uh, Jamal K- Kagoshi. Uh, am I saying this right? I have no Kishogi. idea. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, that's Kishogi. Right, that's right. Uh, this is a $1 billion investment. It might actually stop because of this, good. They're, this like, death with the journalist. Saudi Arabia is, they're crazy. Yeah, they're crazy. Like, um, they, yeah. Let's get some consequences. Exactly. It's yeah. such a, America right now. It's just like, no, we're, we're going to ignore that. Yeah. And we're just like, do, 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 do. Did you guys hear there's a skull-shaped asteroid that's shaped <laughs> like a skull that's going to pass by Earth in time for Halloween. Are <laughs> yeah. you serious? Absolutely. This is asteroid 2015 TB145. It'll is- pass at, four, at 38 million kilometers from Earth. It's not, it's not a big asteroid. It's about 625 meters wide. But shaped like a big skull. It, well, it kind of kind of looks like a skull. That's amazing. amazing. When you look at the sh- when you, they took a picture of it, and when you look at the shaded area, it kind of looks mm. like a human skull. Yeah. So it's going to pass close by for Halloween, but it's going to really get close to the Earth around November 11th. Ooh. <laughs> Spooky. Are we going to be able to see it with the naked eye? Like, I don't is know. Is there going to be like a trail no, thir- or anything? No, 38 million kilometers. Yeah, I don't no, think that's, so. That's, that's a way. That's, that's far. not yeah. not that close. I wonder if it has a trail or anything. It's a com- uh, it's not a comet. It's just an asteroid. They uh, won't have a tail. You're right. Yeah. Uh, did you guys hear that? Apparently, um, about four thousand refugee migrants from Honduras yep. are heading to the U.S. and they're at the Guatemala Mexico border mm-hmm. as we speak. I did hear about this. Um, of course, Trump described them as criminals. Yeah, of course. And he even said it was a Democrat ploy. I know. <laughs> to bring 4,000 immigrants refugees. And then he talked about sending the army to the border. Yes. And it's like, seriously, dude? Like, why do you think these people are coming? Like, Amer- like America throughout its history has prided itself with being freedom. Yeah. And how the American dream and how it's an immigrants can come and make something of their lives. Like, if if you build your country on that idea... You can't then be surprised when people in desperate situations will travel hundreds and thousands of miles to get to you. Exactly. Like, seriously. And uh, what makes me laugh, too, is uh, Honduras, you know, I know a lot of people are, are have some libertarian leanings. If you want libertarian paradise, Honduras was it. Seriously. They have very little regulation of any kind, of anywhere or anything. And it's wow. And it's like say, one it's of the highest hole. crime. It's a shit. Yeah, I think they have the highest crime city. Yeah, exactly. In the world. So, so people wow. that you know really t- try to tout no government and libertarian and freedom. Well, there's your example. Yeah. There's, Regulations there's your example. help. Yeah, keep exactly. Keep society in order. You think of it as red tape. I think of it as the rule that keep us safe. Yeah. Uh, okay. In other news, did you guys hear that Godzilla 
is actually having a yes. constellation. I'm sorry. Uh, an yes. official constellation for Godzilla from NASA. NASA's giving Godzilla it's gonna be a constellation. It's going to be a Godzilla constellation. I'm so happy right now. It's a gamma ray constellation. Um, because apparently there's a, some gamma ray burst once mm-hmm. in a while, and it kind of mimics the atomic breath of the monster. That yes. is <laughs> so amazing. Godzilla is going to have his own constellation I in the it. sky. <laughs> I can't wait for it to give the, the coordinates this for that. Is, this is what we get from nerds. It's way better than the stupid constellation we have anyway. Um, okay, and last but certainly not least, did you guys hear there was a naked man... <laughs> Okay. Yes. That went skinny dipping with sharks in Toronto. I'm sorry, what? Yep. <laughs> I hope these sharks how did, were well fed. How did you not hear about this? I uh, haven't been on Facebook He the went last at the week. Ripley's Aquarium of Canada. This is in Toronto. The guy is David Weaver, 37, not Wiener, Weaver. <laughs> He's from Nelson, right here in BC. <laughs> he was probably smoking pot. He decided to just strip <laughs> yeah. down to nothing and jump into the aquarium in the pool with sand tiger sharks, sawfish, and moray eels. Wow. <laughs> I, I really hope... Is, did he get injured? I no, hope he was not no, injured. No, the, the animals no. mainly ignored him. Fantastic. Yeah, those were some of the... Um, I think those are some of the less aggressive... Yeah, That's yeah, exactly. Bad. On that. Well, he was arrested with all his body parts, too. <laughs> yeah. So. But why, what, I want to know what possessed this man to strip down butt naked and jump into a shark tank. <laughs> well, chances are he probably was drunk. I don't know. Or the article doesn't say. In some way. This was well, before pot was legal. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. You can still smoke pot. And I know. I guess last but certainly not least, I, we have to say exactly. cannabis is now legal woo, woo, in the country. Woo. Day. <laughs> so we are going to have the first show of November because next week is our Halloween. annual Halloween special. But the show after that, we are going to do a pot special. And I've got a couple of people that hopefully will come here with their paraphernalia and Sweet. we'll get Christina <laughs> start smoking yes. and maybe myself too. Because I have never done drugs. No, me neither. I had one bad pot brownie experience yeah he did the the fatal flaw and ate too much yeah i probably had the best experience he ate ate too much edibles yeah he's like it's not affecting me let's eat more yeah yeah, that's pretty much what (laughs) happened i ended up in the hospital see the three of us just ganged up on the one boyfriend that was there and said he could take all of the pretzels because none of us wanted the pretzels in the bag of munchies yeah fair enough I'm I'm very curious what kind of high person I am. We're, we're, we're gonna, I'm either going to be super weepy or like really deep. A few of us are going to have to stay sober because you know, let's face it, we don't want the show to go off the rails. Well, the uh, usually does, but not completely off yeah. the rails. So you're going to have to stay sober. Well, to some to some extent, you know, I might I might try to take one take puff. a few puffs or something like that. But you know, I, I still since I'm doing the technical stuff mostly. Yeah, you don't want to be like I have to be <laughs> able to. It goes up stop and down. The recording and, and stop the audio and stop all that. See, that'll stuff. be me. Oh, look at the buttons. Oh, oh, you guys, I swear. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. You innocent, innocent little flower. Yeah, or I'm going to be like, I don't, yeah, see, I don't even know what happened. Like, I don't even know what I'm going to be like. Well, it's going to be an interesting. I get weird when I'm drunk, so I don't know what it's going to be like. I've when never I get... seen you drunk. I'd be curious to see that, too. My legs have taken Shh. charge. <laughs> I, get, I just get, I get weird. <laughs> And funny and that laugh. Is my favorite. Well, it's, it's better than that than being like a mean drunk. Yeah, I'm not right? a mean drunk. I'm yes. I'm a weird drunk. <laughs> okay. I'm the kind of drunk that'll just like kind of stare at you. So, so now I'm kind of curious. And, like, I almost want to bring face. alcohol on top of that and see no, what happens. Let's not, not mix them. That can be another show, Kevin. <laughs> okay, that's fair too. We can just get yeah. We should we should we should have an after dark episode where we the get drunk, drunk show. And this will be the show where I actually will probably talk. Exactly. <laughs> because. <laughs> I share this with my grandfather. We both get, get talkative. Chatty. We get really chatty, and it drove my grandma nuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. All right. Well, no Nancy today again. Sadly. Uh, sadly. No. Well, she'll be back with us next week, yes. I'm pretty sure. But in the meantime, let's do another brilliant moment. Brought to you by religion. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Starting off... Um, India's Supreme Court recently overturned a centuries-old ban on females of menstruating age entering a major Hindu temple. However, protesters are still blocking girls and women from entering. Uh, Hold on a second. India, land of progress. (coughs) (laughs) They had a century-old ban on women menstruating? Of menstruating age. Menstruating age? Yeah, so... 
It goes. Well, it could be like you could be ten years old. Yeah. Yeah, or probably like up to like forty-five. 50. So, the, so 50. these women, these young girls and young women and women, weren't allowed to do what? They're not allowed to enter um, a major Hindu temple. Oh, who would want to do that? They can't even enter. Um, so the Sabarimala Temple, one of the world's largest Hindu pilgrimage centers, complied with the Supreme Court ruling, but was obstructed by protesters who fought with police in the streets, according to the Associated Press. As the gates of the temple were flung open, a crowd of male devotees surged toward the temple... Um, about a thousand police officers used batons to try to control the wow, protesters. A thousand? A thousand. How like, many? this is big. Wow. Um, who attacked them with stones and damaged police and TV vehicles and bullied female devotees to turn back. Well, you have to remember, this is one of the largest mm-hmm. centers. Yeah. <clears throat> um, the protesters ran after the media vehicles, pounding them with hands and kicking to stop them from reaching the temple site. The state industry, industry minister, E.P. Jayarajan, told Good job. thank you, told the Press Trust of India news agency that at least ten reporters and photojournalists were injured and their equipment damaged. Uh, police arrested eleven protesters when they tried to block the path of some females. Uh, Pooja Prasanna of Republic TV said the protesters hurled stones at a police van where she and her crew members had taken shelter after the car, their car was targeted and snatched away officers' batons when they tried to shield them. Wow. Jeez. All that for menstruating women. Yeah. <laughs> the New Delhi television channel reported that about 20 protesters surrounded a bus in which a reporter of the News Minute channel was traveling and tried to pull her out. Angry protesters kicked and hurled abuses at her, uh, NDTV reported. Wow. All of this violence against women is based on nothing more than a law lo- than long-standing sexism. Yeah, yeah, of course. This temple has discriminated against women between ages of ten and fifty for years because of a religious belief that should have been abandoned long before it ever opened. Um, now that they're finally forced to open their doors to women, this is what happens. You know, maybe they should have a uh, sponsorship. For these temples, you know, you know how all the coliseums and all the Rogers Arena and all that—they all have a new name now. Mm-hmm. That temple should be sponsored by Always <laughs> with wings. Oh my gosh! <laughs> um, the Hindu god is sponsored by Always <laughs> and Tampax. <laughs> Tampax um, Pearl. The history of the ban on menstruating women is actually interesting in its own terms. It was observed for many years based on tradition, solidified into law in 1972, and it has been the subject of controversy ever since. Not surprising. Um, and it's basically what it leads you to say is that women that are menstruating are impure. Well, jeez. Yeah. Quite true, right? Impure. impure. Um, <laughs> so the ban was lifted last month, and I guess we will see... Was anybody seriously injured? In I don't. This? It doesn't mention anyone was seriously injured. Um, it just says that ten reporters and photojournalists were injured. That sucks. Uh, it just b- bothers me that this is 2018 for Christ's sake. You know, <laughs> some woman having her period and somehow she's you can't touch her. You know, yeah. it's like uh, what the hell? <laughs> what do you well, think? it's not that you, she, you can't even touch her. She's not clean to enter a building. Yeah, yeah. It says, what do you think she's going to do? Infect the building? Yeah, that's what they think is gonna happen. Yeah, this 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 is obviously a <laughs> they obviously know nothing about yeah. biology well, whatsoever. It's it's a belief solely based on religion. Yeah, like, there's no ground. Yeah, there's in no reality. grounds with, in science for that whatsoever. Yeah, and you know what is it about God's not liking women menstruating? Because anyway? I mean, if they made him that way, why the hell would they have a problem? Usually, it's men that's made these religions, and that's they correct. get skeeved out that's by correct. women's blood. Which is stupid. Women's menstruating. That's like the men's kryptonite. Exactly. No! (laughs) How do you clear out a hallway of teenage boys? Throw a tampon in the middle. Uh. (laughs) You guys remember these old... Well, no, you guys won't remember this. I didn't have TV growing up. They used to have, like, I I think in the 80s, there was, like, really old commercials about... There was a tampon brand. And uh, that commercial was always stuck in my head for some reason. It was the setup that was, you know, that was, like, this spy thing going on. And this woman spy, she's wearing like the fedora and the trench, <laughs> and 
And she's accosted by this Russian individual sounding guy. You know, and he's saying, give me the microfilm. And he's threatening her. And she reaches into her purse and, and she pulls out, out this tampon. tiny tampon pack and gives it to him. And he says, we have it, Igor. Let's run away. And they run away and she just <laughs> gave him their tampon. Oh, and that was the commercial. Gosh, and that always that's stuck hilarious. into my mind. They give me the microfilm or the microchip or something like that. It always wow. stuck in my mind. Isn't that just shows how little they knew at that time. Yes. Yeah. Well, you could do that in a temple too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. On to a lighter note. Lighter note? <laughs> that one was the first that was, he- was heavy flow. Oh, God. <laughs> I love it. Uh Cat Kerr again. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Didn't I put a moratorium on her? No, she's like our patron saint. Well, she is. I wasn't going to, and then, and then, and then I just I saw this, and I'm like, oh god. <laughs> During a recent appearance, she declared that she commands an army of 33 billion angels who are so powerful that they have caused ISIS fighters to drop their weapons and flee. I'm sorry. 33 billion? What? Are they, like, microscopic? <laughs> well, you know, if you had 33 billion of anything, you would drop their weapon. Probably. Like, what? You got 33 billion squirrels going at ISIS, I would drop my weapons okay. too. That would be terrifying. That would be terrifying. <laughs> what kind of angels do you have? Sorry, I'm just picturing that now. Oh, are you picturing the squirrels? Squirrels yes. attacking. I am picturing thirty over like thirty six billion squirrels, just like They're just gnawing at your ankles. Of squirrels coming at you like the size of a sand dune, just like <laughs> <laughs> throw away the walnuts, throw away the walnuts. <laughs> the squirrels are coming. Just this one dude. Oh, I was trying to be healthy today. Why did I bring that? <laughs> <laughs> That's I, it. I'm never eating healthy again. Uh, I knew it was predicted. The squirrels are attacking. Oh my god! So 33 billion angels. 33 right. billion. That's I prefer insane. the squirrel story, but that's okay. Even when the ISIS were everywhere, my favorite thing to do is I would command my hosts to go and pull down the strongholds of Satan, commanding the ISIS, and fear would fall. Commanding on them. the ISIS. The ISIS. The ISIS. The ISIS. You wow. can break the ISIS with dentine gum. <laughs> They began to find weapons abandoned in the desert in the Middle East. Maybe they died. They didn't know what happened. The ISIS would drop their weapons and run because my hosts went there. They pulled down all the demonic powers controlling them. They pulled down the strongholds. Those ISIS had no power from Satan because they couldn't hear. They were removed. Fear and confusion falls on them. And that's not like even paraphrase. Like that's a I understand. I totally understand what she meant there. 33 billion. They're not angels. It's all the body parts in that warehouse. <laughs> it's all those kicking legs. They're just wandering around. I drop kicking, my weapon and run too. Snapping hands. <laughs> all these body parts. Thirty-three billion. It's not that big of a deal. I think when you, if, if they're just body parts, right? True. <sighs> so you just have animated body parts from the warehouse in heaven that we had a couple weeks ago. Come down and kick <laughs> ISIS ass. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. That would also be terrifying. That would also be terrifying. <laughs> Forget the squirrels. Because it's not just arms and legs. It would be like in entrails and like yeah, everything. eating hearts. You just lungs. got legs running by themselves, you know. <laughs> Hands floating behind them. Uh, uh, just, just keep that in mind with this next statement. Okay, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready for it. Kerr went on to claim that prior to the 2016 presidential election, she had traveled to Washington, D.C. and posted heavenly sentinels up and down Pennsylvania Avenue to protect President Trump. Jesus From Christ. what? I don't know. Satan, of Certainly course. Certainly not his stupidity. No, there's nothing that can save him from that. Intelligence. <laughs> that's, what wow. it's, that's what it's protecting him from. Protecting Donald Trump from facts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then apparently she saw them visibly being posted there. And she went on to claim that when Christians learn to take proper authority over heavenly hosts, they are rewarded with an ever-increasing army of angels to command. So, I have actually like kind of serious question. Is she like schizophren- schizophrenic? Like, is she act like crazy? Well, you know what? She it, kind of when you listen, a little crazy. When you listen to her interviews, I mean, you listen to the interviews like guys like Pat Robertson and all that, and you kind of. Just by their body language, the way they talk, I think a lot of these people actually don't believe what they say. They're, they're, they're like a character. Yeah. But her? 
I think she actually does oh, believe it. I think she believes what I she says. I think she actually does believe so, like, this shit. Like, I, oh, watched, so I watched the video, and, like, that earlier quote I was saying is almost, like, pretty well word for word what she said. That's actually really sad. It is sad. It, it's, it's sad. It's like, I don't know. Should we, like, not make fun of her then? No, like, no, it's too good. It's kind of sad. It is sad, like, but I mean, the, the 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 fact is that we're not making fun of her because it's just funny, but it's because in well, a way, people, actually people her. follow her. Yeah, too, as wow. crazy as she is. And apparently, it doesn't take you that long to build up a ridiculously massive army. She says she's been doing it for around five years or so, and she has thirty three billion that she sends everywhere all the time. I'm surprised she didn't come out with a more precise number. 33,900,077. And the <laughs> newest one is named Greg. <laughs> yes. He just joined this morning. Greg the Pinky to <laughs> Kerr claimed that she has sent her angel army out all over America to influence elected officials and laws at every level and dispatched angels throughout the midterm elections into every voting booth to speak to the people in the voting booth to vote for life, freedom, and justice. And the American way. So Here they should comes all Superman. vote Democratic then. I mean, uh... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dem- oh, like, Democratic. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Catker. Wow. Oh. oh, well. What can you do? Laugh. I'm, I'm not That's sure. All we if, can do laugh or cry or scream. Those are our three options. I'm not sure what's scarier the squirrels or the body parts. Mm, yeah. It depends how graphic. What if the, the body- squirrels are writing the body parts? Oh, yeah. What did you just think of in that sick, twisted brain of yours? <laughs> Oh, no, 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 I thought of, like, the squirrels riding the body parts, but I was like, it depends how, like, graphic, like, the body parts are. If they're, like, still blood or, and, and stuff. Like, I don't know. And if it's all body parts, like your liver and your <laughs> Well, it's, it's everything, but I don't, I don't, like, they're kept alive, but I think they're kept alive with, like, heavenly power or something. Yeah. Yes. So there wouldn't be, like, blood squirting or anything. It would just be body parts. I, I, I feel I, I feel sorry for Kat Kerr because I hate to say it, but one day she's going to put herself in a situation where she might actually, actually get hurt. She might actually try to go and swish a real freaking hurricane and get swiped by a freaking Volvo that's flying around. Or a stop sign. Or a stop that's sign. That's the best or, video. Or, or whatever. <laughs> Have you never seen that video of a reporter getting hit by a stop sign? Yeah. It's the best gift. Some of them are fake, too. And some of these videos that have a reporter being hit by a fish. Apparently, it's yeah. fake. Yeah. Oh, all that's sad. That one's funny. That's okay. I've seen videos where they're like, they're like, oh, the wind is terrible. And you see just somebody casually walking. Yeah. <laughs> or where they're like on their, it looks like they're like water's up to their knees. But they're kneeling. And the person, there's someone walks behind them and the, it's like water's like, the, like in two <laughs> inches deep. And they're just sitting on their knees. Oh, uh, all right. So uh, let's go for a quick break. And then when we come back, we'll put on our heavy metal caps yeah. oh, we don't do that often rock out never had, never had a heavy metal no I, I use I'm personally not I love folk music so heavy metal is never really drawn me except disturbed love disturbed um, so it was really I really enjoyed like listening to this music and kind of it's like exploring a different sound than I'm used to yeah so we'll be talking to Damien Lee Thor of the group Predators when we come back. So stay with us. In a world torn apart by a lack of reason. Or And I think it should be religion treated with ridicule and hatred and contempt. And I claim that right. In the morning. Hi, everybody. This is Robert Stanley from the Right to Reason podcast. And if you subscribe now, you'll get free. Learn more about the broadcast at therighttoreason.com. Just just think about the Muslims at this moment who are blowing themselves up, convinced that they are agents of God's will. There is absolutely nothing that Dr. Craig can, can say against their behavior in moral terms, apart from his own faith based claim that they're praying to the wrong God. If they had the right God, what they were doing would be good on divine command theory. 
Now, I'm obviously not saying that all the Dr. Craig or all religious people are psychopaths and psychotics, but this to me is the, is the true horror of religion. It allows perfectly decent and sane people to believe by the billions what only lunatics could believe on their own. Okay, if you wake up tomorrow morning thinking that saying a few Latin words over your pancakes is going to turn them into the body of Elvis Presley, okay, you have lost your mind. Okay. But if you think more or less the same thing about a cracker and the body of Jesus, you're just a Catholic. All right, so our next guest is actually a lead guitarist of an atheist heavy metal group. Who would have thought we'd have that on the show? Uh, we're awesome, of course. Absolutely. We He's a snappy awesome dresser people. and a snazzy dancer, Damon D. Thor. Thank you so much for joining us at Left of the Valley. Thank you for having me. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> awesome. So uh, you and I have been friends on Facebook for a while, and that's how we kind of got in touch. And I was kind of curious about your group and all that. And I was really s- curious about the fact that here you have a heavy metal group, and it's an activist group, and, and, and it's act- there's a lot of activism that you guys do about atheism. So maybe you'd be so kind to give us a, a quick bio about yourself and what the group does. Well, um, Predator is an openly atheist band that gets involved in a lot of activism. We have two albums out on the world market. We have the third album already written, but we will do a, a live album before we do the third album, mainly because we have to break in a new lead singer. Right now, we've been rehearsing to get that under control, under wraps. Um, Predator has been around for quite a bit. We have a major label. We are an MVD and God of Thunder Records. Um, I write all the songs, all the lyrics. It's all very atheist based, although a couple of songs are about uh, social activism, you know, criticizing uh, government, Mm -hmm. war, and uh, exposing bad things in the world, such as human trade, human trafficking, um, and things of that nature, um, domestic abuse. We have a song called Closet Antichrist from the first album that also comes with a DVD of the video, mm-hmm. and for every copy that sells, a dollar gets donated to women in distress. Wow. Fantastic. That's awesome. I hope uh, at, at the end of the show there, please send us the link so we can post that in the, in the notes, so if people want to download the album and uh, contribute to that, we'll... Uh... Sure, I'll, I'll get you all those links afterwards. I, Fantastic. I'm not very computer savvy, so I don't know how to send this from the phone while I'm on the phone and stuff, no, no, so I'll have you to can do, do it after we're done here. After. You can do it after. So, so you guys, the, the the group Predator. What year did, did you guys band together and form the group there? You've been around for a little while. It's, yeah, it's two thousand eight, but uh, we've uh, it's been a slow career due to some uh, many many reasons. But yeah, um, we are a hot band. Um, we've been in every European magazine. Very very positive write ups everywhere. Um, there's an Italian magazine called Metal Maniacs. They even gave us the centerfold with our live shot. It was amazing to see that. Wow, wow. way to go! Yeah. And we get you know we get a lot of uh, fan letters, fan emails. Um, you know, in fact, this morning I even got a, a text on Facebook from a fan who wants the transcription to Born in Blood so he can learn to play it. So it's kind of oh, cool. That is so cool. That is very cool. That is very cool. Uh, yeah. This is very interesting that you guys are being a heavy metal group and merging this with atheism in a way because, uh, first of all, I, I, I commend you on being an artist and exposing that because I think we I think this, the movement seriously lacks that. Yes. But do you, do you feel that, you know, one of the things that atheists are often accused of is being angry. Do you feel that a heavy metal group as an atheist group as well kind of reinforces that stereotype? Do I look angry? <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, I think a lot of us are angry right now. No, the thing is, I think that mainly heavy metal is uh, is a very personal form of expression. Mm. So is atheism. Mm-hmm. Basically, a lot of, especially the Christians, they mistake our frustration with them interfering with human progress 
as anger, but it's not anger. I mean, the thing is, all these laws that they're trying to pass so that they can discriminate against gays and interracial couples and everything else that they're doing, I mean, they're basically interfering with life. They are trying to tell us what to do in the bedroom. They're trying to tell us what to do, literally. Yeah. It's, uh, they, you know, basically they're trying to sneak all their beliefs with all these, these politicians into our laws and into our schools. I mean, they want people to think or to believe that the world is only 6,000 years old, which is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. They, they want us to believe, they want everyone to believe that an imaginary being made man, made all of us from dirt, you know, mm-hmm. according to those flawed scriptures. And that's why we have to stand up and back them off because that will force us to live in a fascist theocracy if uh, we let them get away with it. Basically, we cannot be silent. We have to be active. We have to be proactive. We have to fight them at every turn. We have to, what we need is basically more atheist politicians. That's really the essence of it. That's what we need. I totally agree. But Damien, come on, man. I mean, if, if, if we did, if if we came from monkeys, why are there still monkeys, man? Like, (laughs) come on, right? (laughs) Well, if we came from dirt, why is it still dirt? Well, that's a good question. too. (laughs) (laughs) So with your music, having such a strong activism in the lyrics and um, the music, what is like, what hope? What do you hope your music will inspire? Mm-hmm. In Good people? question. I want to accomplish everything with Predator's music. We want to accomplish everything. Predator is a band that doesn't take no for an answer, and you know it hasn't been that easy. I mean, a lot of people will not book us because of who we are, because yeah. of really? what we stand for. Um, there was a festival down here not too long ago. They refused to book Predator because we are atheists. Wow. Wow. Do you find that in, that's why you, do you find it's easier in Europe than to like get gigs? We have, well, I don't know why. I know that there's, I know that Europe is much more secular Mm -hmm. and uh, our record sales from our record company and even on Amazon all the sales, you know, it's on eighty percent Europe. All our sales. Wow. There, there is a huge following of uh, heavy metal and hard rock in Europe. Yeah. There is. There really is. Yeah. Well, they love us there, and we love them <laughs> back. I mean, by the way, for all of you guys in Europe and in Barcelona, saludos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure we might have some listeners in we, there somewhere. We do have European, we do have we do European, have European listeners. listeners. We do. We do. We <laughs> absolutely do. Fantastic. So, 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 Damien. Uh, so so now you guys are, are are going out there and you're you're playing your music and uh, do do you wish sometimes that you could just grab your guitar and just smash it over the head of those Christian bands? <laughs> no, my guitars are very special to me. I build them myself, and each one goes really? for three thousand dollars. I'm not going to do that. Wow, the man is talented. You are definitely talented. He is talented, That's and amazing. on top of that, uh, you told us that you were also uh, you have a degree in journalism. That's true. My God, you know, you're, you're like the, the total package, buddy. I mean, Frank, you know, <laughs> no wonder you're such a, a, a powerful activist. I mean, I, I can't... Speaking of... Uh, I'm going to appeal to your journalistic side there for a sec. Um, and I have to I have to ask that question because of the political uh, landscape you guys are in right now. Uh, do you really feel that journalism is in peril in the United States? You know, the shithead-in-chief can say whatever he wants. It's not going to silence anyone. I don't, you know... The, the fact remains that facts are facts. He can lie about it, and unfortunately, his followers and supporters are a bunch of uneducated hicks who uh, most of them didn't even graduate high school. So they're always very misinformed about everything. Mm-hmm. You know, and most of them don't even know that Turkey is a country. Yeah. They, you know, in fact, I was talking with someone just last week, some hillbilly. You know, supporting Trump, you know, and he thought that New Mexico is a foreign country. What? <laughs> wow. Oh, boy. You know, it's the New Mexico. So basically, they're very misinformed. They know nothing about anything, and basically, that's that's how it is. You know, they, they believe every word he says because they don't have the initiative or the critical thinking skills to fact check or to research something on their own that's it's just the way they are 
And that's why there, he's got supporters because a lot of them are just plain stupid. Yeah, yeah. So, let, so uh, by the way, Damien, uh, we do have an open invitation. You can always take you and your band and move to Canada. Exactly. You know? We'll welcome you with open arms up here for sure. <laughs> well, you know what? Set up a date, book us, and we'll be there. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Just Sounds need, like a plan. We just need our honorarium covered. We need transportation covered and and accommodations, and we'll be there. We'll be there. Yeah, but once you're up here, either. This, once you're up here, it's like Hotel California. You can never leave, right? <laughs> wow. <Well, laughs> I like it. But the thing is, I'm near the Keys, so I've been True. down here 30 years. I just didn't want to leave. The thing is, I hate the cold. Oh, see, I hate um, the heat. Ugh, heat. I hate, I hate the cold. Heat. I hate the cold. In fact, uh, we haven't put on the shoes in a long time. See? <laughs> we're, we're near Vancouver. It's not cold here. No, it's we are like, probably the of like Canada, the warmest part of Canada. Yeah, it's, it actually is. Yeah, it's a bit. It's a bit like Seattle up here. So that's what it is, really. Yeah. Um, so, Damien, let, let's we're gonna to play in your first song there, uh, uh, "Born in Blood," and uh, give us a quick. It's the title track from our second album. Yes, yes, and give us a quick synopsis there before we play it. Well, the song is a. It's an atheist anthem. I love it already. The, the beginning of it was recorded on the lute. The lute was my first major in college. It's an ancient instrument from the Renaissance, uh, Dark Ages era. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, I wrote the song. The, the rest of it is electric guitars and the whole band jamming in really hard. Okay. The song is an atheist anthem. It says, you fear death and thus invented God in heaven. There's no emancipation. No one's bled for your salvation. We are only flesh. We are born in blood. That's yeah. the first line. And, uh, you know, it's a song that gets to the point about what atheism is. A lot of people just don't understand. Some people think it's a religion. And thinking that atheism is a religion would be thinking that not collecting stamps is a hobby. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So let's play Born in Blood and then we'll come right back and talk about it some more.
Okay, that was Born in Blood. I love the way you start in these songs because when you have an idea of heavy metal, you don't think you're gonna hear loot right away. No, it's it's it's, it's kind of disarming but inviting at the same time. I love it. I think I'm one of five people in Florida that play the loot. Seriously. Wow. <laughs> you know, this guy's got more talent. <laughs> the more we learn about him, he's got ta- What else? You, you, you're like Alligator Wrangler too while you're there? <laughs> no, but I did have a banjo student who was uh, an Alligator Wrangler. <laughs> there we go. So he, he still had all ten fingers. Impressive. Oh, he's yes, got me beat. indeed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank <laughs> So, uh, so you 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 said already that you guys were having issues as an athe- as a group sometimes getting booked uh, in some places in the United States. Uh, but you guys have been a band for ten years now. Do you feel that the trend you're getting more and more accepted because uh, atheism seems to be on the rise, or is it still really really common for you guys to uh, bump into that brick wall? Well main thing is that people are just brain dead they're blinded with belief and uh, as an atheist band what we're essentially doing we're planting seeds with the hopes that one day it will provoke someone to think in questions like oh yeah you know um, do some reading you know what I mean reading reading <laughs> No, well, Damien, really, tell us really how you feel about these people, because I don't think we get a clear yeah, image no, right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> are, are all the members of your band uh, athe- atheist in nature, or do you guys, is it a mixed bag? Everyone's an atheist except one, but he's a really good guy, and uh, I think he'll eventually come around. I think he's... <laughs> still a believer out of fear but we don't bother him and he doesn't mind us being atheists and we love him he's a great friend he's a very talented drummer and uh, he um, you know his name is Darren McNair Mm -hmm. and because of his background uh, which is really weird too because he's African American okay and you know Christianity was beaten into them. Yeah. Yes, it certainly was. By means of uh, gargantuan violence through slavery and all that. So, um, yeah, I think he'll come around. In fact, he's been qu- he's been starting to question it because he said, "Wow, this is weird." In the Bible, it says that you must be circumcised or otherwise something, something, something. And uh, I said, "Well, you know, you got to think about who wrote that." And this is a long time ago, and uh, these are people who didn't know. You know where the sun went down yeah. at night. You know these are people that every basically it, the book is can be discredited by just reading it because um, you can tell that whoever wrote it didn't know anything about science, about the universe, about geography, about nature, mm-hmm. and it contradicts everything that we know about science and nature and the universe and geography. So that's enough to dismissal claims of divine authorship or inspiration absolutely mm-hmm. absolutely so you guys started the band in 2008 what what made you decide to start the band yes what was the genesis initially me and chris riser who's no longer in the band were doing just recording projects and we kept adding songs and parts and and uh once I started writing lyrics and had a great singer on there, I just said to myself, you know, this is way too good to just dismiss and leave it as a recording. Let's just do this as a band and get out there. Mm-hmm. And within two weeks of releasing the first album, it got signed to Arctic. Wow. On oh. uh, MBD. And so I didn't think it was, I mean, I knew we were going to get signed because we're really good. <laughs> and it's a very marketable sound. It's a very, mar- mar- very marketable band. But I didn't think it was going to happen in two weeks. And so we just took it and ran with it. And and we've been here ever since. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's that's pretty cool. We had the big amphitheater near here. We've performed. I mean, we've opened for Eister, for Sabaton, for Malevolent Creation, and for other major big bands. So That's awesome. You know, um, 
we're, we're a band that is going to take over the world. And we have a unique sound. Mm-hmm. This is, you know, the best way I can describe it is like a heavy slayer with the guitar details of Maiden. In fact, there's a, there's a writer in Europe, in Germany, that described us as that and he starts calling us Iron Slayer. Oh, I Iron love that's it. Slayer. Awesome. Wow, that's a, that's a hell of a compliment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we take whatever we can, you know. <laughs> not you know, the band's not for everyone. A lot of people don't like us, and that's okay. Our first manager warned us not to come out publicly as an openly atheist band, Seriously. but you know, after thinking about it, we went ahead and did it anyway because when. Christian parents tell their kids not to do something, not to buy Predator records. That's the first thing they're going to want to do. Oh, they're going to buy it. They're going to do exactly that. They're like, let's check out this thing my parents don't want me to listen to. Yes. No, I I, I got it. Wearing shirts. See your shirts? I don't regret ever coming out as atheist. Good. We need need more of that. We certainly need more of that. Uh, I got to ask about the name of the band, Predator. I mean, I can understand why you wouldn't want Fluffy Bunnies <laughs> as a name for a heavy metal group, but was it was it the idea that you had in mind? Does the name really reflect the heavy metal side of things, or does it have a particular significance? I thought it was catchy. It is. It is catchy. It is very catchy. It was catchy and marketable. We we registered the name. We have a trademark. We have an EIN number, so it's basically a business entity now. It's not just a band. Nice. We have to pay taxes every year. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. So let's play in our second song here. What song we, we, we selected? We selected a Slave. So tell us about Slave. Slave is a song that I wrote about human trafficking because it's something that goes on and it's hard to to crack down on it. And unfortunately, the victims are young girls that are lured into the country after being promised jobs, and they're desperate. They're trying to escape poverty and violence and things like that. These young girls are not even 15 years old, 17 years old, things like that. And uh, they come from countries like Russia, Guatemala, Mexico, um, even from Venezuela, you know, where Mm -hmm. there's a lot of hardships and they promise them all this stuff. Once they come into the States, they hide their passports, they hold it for ransom, and basically they say, okay, I paid for your flight here, I I paid for this, and I'm paying for your room here, so now you do what I say in order to pay me back, and they force them into prostitution. And and of course they have to comply, because if they don't want to do it, they beat them. They they brutalize them until they're forced to do it. And so... uh, Some of them have been rescued, but I don't think there's enough being done about it. And um, look, I'm a human being, and I hate thinking about the fact that there's women out there that are going through this, and it breaks me that I can't do more about it. I don't go to brothels. I don't go to prostitute places. So I don't even know where to find these victims, but I know that they're out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So let's listen to that and we'll be right back after that song.
and that was Sling. Now, it's a, it's a very pressing issue, and I think it's an issue that's certainly not getting a lot of press, and I commend you and your bandmates for actually bringing that to the forefront. Do you really feel that amongst your fans... I mean, I think I think there's two different types of fans when you get when you listen to music. There's people that just listen to the music and they just sway to the beat and whatever, mm-hmm. and there are people that listen deeply, and they understand there's a message behind that. Do you feel your uh, the majority of your fans are listening to the message that you guys have behind your songs? Absolutely, Thank absolutely. You. Because we get into discussions about them. I don't close the door on any of the fans. A lot of them have questions. A lot of them are in situations where. They're coming out atheists to their families, and I advise them on how to do that. Um, you know, I got one of the things that comes with being in a band that's popular is that you're against your will thrown into a position where you're a role model. Yeah. Mm. So I have to set examples for people out and do things that are immoral, basically. Not to mention, I'm also. Every now and then I work as a school teacher teaching music, so... What? <laughs> yes, I have to. Yeah. When I'm not performing, I'm also teaching, and sometimes I teach in the school system. I'm an educator, and so basically I'm a role model, and I have to set standards, and I have to set examples. So so you're, you you're, know, you're a guitar player in a heavy metal band with a journalism degree that does activism and you're a teacher? You, you, yes, this guy's like music, my new hero. Yep. This guy's like my new hero. I mean, for <laughs> Christ's sake, is there something you can do, Damien, at this point? Alligator wrestle. I mean, and he wrestles alligator <laughs> on the side. No, 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 no. no. I wouldn't do that. I would not that. wrestle an alligator. I'm afraid <laughs> of them. And besides, I really, really need my fingers. Yes. Kind it's, of it's too late. It's though. too late now. You, there's a there's a myth out there of Damien Lee. <laughs> there's a, there's a <laughs> myth out there of the ultimate wrestler. Superman. He's wrestling alligator while playing his guitar. <laughs> no, his guitar lulls him to sleep like Fluffy. <laughs> yeah, <fair enough. laughs> it's a different kind of stringed instrument. Damien, Damien being an activist like that and having your fingers in so many uh, so so many pies in a way. Uh, I was thinking, uh, I know uh, you said your guitars are like your, your babies, and I get that, but h- how much would it cost me to have you smash a guitar on Donald Trump's head? Oh, that might just be Say that one more time. How, how much would you charge me to smash one of your guitars on Donald Trump's head? Patreon goal. Why would you waste <laughs> such a beautiful guitar? Oh, you got a point. You got a point. <laughs> Who's not worthy of being hit on the head with a guitar? Wow. <laughs> Try a bowling ball, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> or a shot put. <laughs> this guy just needs to choke on his own foot. Basically. Oh. Or maybe foot. his tie. They seem to keep getting longer. I could see him choking on a tie. Like a baby. Like no, baby I'd rather see him choke on his own foot. Yeah. But come on, funny. you know, I will... that first lady, that wife of his, you can tell she's an opportunist. Uh, yeah. I think that if, seriously, think about it. I think that if you remove the wealth out of, this, out of the equation, I don't think anybody... Including oh, her, would be lining up to suck his dick. Oh, for sure. No, for sure. not even like no. The only reason <laughs> he has anybody around. There's him nothing to like about money. the guy. Yeah, it's money, right? It's all there is. Yeah, yeah. it's all there is. I, I think I would pay a caricature, somebody that could do a caricature of <gasps> Damien choking Donald Trump by the tie, <laughs> when in front of his group. Why do me? I think I think this should be like the cover album for you for your oh next album gosh. cover art. <laughs> Um, well, dude, I paint my own album covers. I'm also a painter. That's another thing you don't know about me. I'm an artist. <laughs> hey, look at these. We need to oh, see that. No, it's audio, right? <laughs> oh, you see those? No, I can't see them, Damien. It's only audio. I only we only have audio. the audio. Okay, well, look. Next time, you get, next time you look through my Facebook page, go into my photo albums, and there's an album of photos called My Paintings or Paintings or Art. And you can see my paintings there. Definitely. Oh, the man there's, has many, many, many talents. There's nothing <laughs> this man does not do. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Damien, uh, in, in, in your activism, what do you feel are the most pressing issues at this point? Keeping laws secular where, where, where there's justice and fairness for everyone. Uh, it's a great trespass upon humanity when 
someone is given the right to discriminate based on their religious convictions, mm -hmm. that's wrong. I mean, people are free to practice whatever they want to believe, but it should stop there. If it's their belief, it's their belief, and that's that. For example, if they don't like abortion, don't have one, but don't tell somebody else that they cannot have one because of what they believe in. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't have a right to do that. They don't have a right to... A Christian waitress, for example, does not have the right to refuse service to a gay couple or an interracial couple just because she doesn't feel it's right according to her Bible. And that's bullshit. No one should be given that right to discriminate and to deny someone the right to sit down and have dinner. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, I totally understand what you mean. They have no business in our bedrooms. You know what I mean? They have no business in our private lives. Do you, do you think that because a lot of, like, religious people believe in, like, a higher being that is in all of our lives, that that's one of the reasons why they think they should be in all of our lives? That's a good question. I cannot get inside their heads. I have no idea why they think what they think. I think one of the things I believe is that in most cases, they believe out of tradition because it's what they've been taught. Yeah. Yeah. And whether they really believe it is a different matter, but I don't buy it for a second. I mean, I've done the research, you know, being a journalist and all that. I've interviewed many people, including Richard Carrier. Oh, yes. Um, I love Richard. And so, uh, and I've read all his books as well, but uh, whenever I have a question when I'm writing an article or an essay, I go to him and I ask him, hey, what about this? When did this start? Because he, he has a PhD in ancient history. Mm -hmm. So I trust his word first before I will believe any dumb preacher who pretends to know more than scientists with doctorate degrees and peer review published works mm -hmm. yeah. that confirm their words as fact. And if you dealt with Richard Carey, you also know that he's very thorough very thorough in his writing. Not, not to mention, Richard Carey is also very sincere, very honest, very intellectually honest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he basically puts it out the way it is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, do, you, do you feel, Damien, uh, let's look at the future a bit there. Uh, I mean, you have you've guys have been a band for 10 years. Oh, and before, before I ask you that, uh, were you always a, a, an atheist or did you have a moment of apostasy? You know, you know the magazine American Atheist? Uh-huh. You know the magazine American Atheist? Yep. Okay, they did an article on me. We've been featured in the magazine twice. Oh, really? They did an article on me, and on the first time, they asked me why I was an atheist and how long I've been an atheist. Basically, I've been an atheist since the age of seven. Nice. I grew up in Spain in a very Catholic family, and I was raised by my grandparents, and they took my grandmother took me to uh, a prayer meeting with a bunch of people. It's something that she would do a lot. And back then, I was under the impression that everyone knew God personally. Yes. That there was evidence for this. That's why I really thought that. And so at that meeting, at this particular meeting, the last one here that I'm referring to, somebody revealed that no one has ever seen God. And then at that point, I was like, hmm. <laughs> wait a minute. So ever since then, I started questioning, like, wait a minute, because this sounds as ridiculous as the myths of Roman mythology, Greek mythology, okay. Norse mythology, all that stuff. And um, I just stopped being a believer at that time, but I did not come out till I was 18. And ever since then, I've had no contact with any of my family, no blood. They oh. don't wow. know anything about me or where I am or anything. I've been on my own ever since as an atheist. I've pretty much been uh, ostracized. Oh, I, it's, it's a sad story, and it's one that's all, all too common, unfortunately. Yeah. Don't be sad. I'm actually very happy. Uh, yeah, some, I couldn't some be happier family, right now. Some family is not worth it. I have a great band. It. I have a great personal life that I cannot talk about. But uh, I have a great life. Believe me, I, I, I am happy. And now you're on the Left of the Valley show. I mean, oh, well, actually, that's maybe hey, that's something hey, to brag we're about. we're wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's play another one of your songs. This is Home. Tell us about Home. Home. Home is about the environment. It's about 
people wasting too much on the environment, uh, building, overbuilding, overpopulating, things like that. Uh, the first line says, the ghost of my childhood remains on your beaches no matter where I go. Oh. <laughs> and with the tone of the wind comes that echo of the surf beaten shore. I love Basically, it. it's about where you grow up. It's about the beach here, or back home in Spain, in Barcelona, in the Mediterranean. And there's places where you can't even get a town on the beach because of so many buildings, so many hotels and condos built there. And, uh, you know, look, if someone has worked hard and earned wealth enough to build a home on the beach, that's fine. But at what point does it become too much? Yeah. You know, because now you can't even get a town on the beach on Fort Lauderdale. Or in many places in Spain on the coast, there's a town called Benidorm. And it's beautiful. It's paradise on earth. And, uh, you know, it's like South Beach times 20. Mm. (laughs) But um, it's disgusting that there's no beach. It's now just buildings. Yeah. So the song, I wrote it in reflection of that. You know, because um, I think a lot of it has been overdeveloped. That's my opinion, but, you know, who am I? Okay, so let's listen in to Home.
And that was Hold. Uh, another one that makes uh, people think and makes your, uh, your listeners uh, think. And I uh, commend you for another great message, obviously. Uh, do, do you feel sometimes that, you know, the uh, there should be more artists that put more messages? I mean... I hate I, most music today is like baby, baby, baby. <laughs> you know, gimme, 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 money, money, money. At least you, your lyrics well, are actually profound. That's why we do what we do. The thing is that um, I think as artists, because we're in the public eye all the time, uh -huh. I think we have a responsibility to make people think, to steer people in the right direction. Um, I mean, I don't want to tell people what to think. I just want them to think for themselves instead of following blindly without questioning things. Yes. You know, um, we have a responsibility as opposed, you know, and the thing is the media sometimes unfortunately eats it up like that. Um, people are so lonely that they're vicariously living through the lives of others. I mean, why do the news have to, and by the way, the news is a great mouthpiece of information to keep everyone informed with facts, but yet... Sometimes they're reporting things, for example, the royal wedding, which I don't get because they're not even, they don't have, they have no power. It's just political, not even political. They're just, yeah. pub, you know, figureheads. They have no power. Yeah. I mean, they were overthrown for a fucking reason, you know? <laughs> and uh, they're also reporting on what Madonna wore to whatever event, you know? It's like, or who she's fucking at the moment, you know? Yeah. Um you know it's a bit, it's a bit of we have a responsibility to keep people informed to talk about issues like for example when we do the song Home or Slave we're exposing problems there's a, another song on the album on Born and Blood called Ingrid Betancourt mm -hmm. about um, a presidential candidate for the country of Colombia who was kidnapped by their terrorists for seven years wow mm. You know, and people don't know about this because these people are still kidnapping people. And I had the pleasure of meeting Ingrid Betancourt a few oh, years wow. ago, and I gave her a copy of the song. Wow. So, you know, I think everyone should be more active. Some artists do, but many of them are just comfortable in the conformity, and some of them believe in God and things like that. In mm -hmm. fact, some of them even believe in Scientology, yeah. which cracks me up because you can't get any faker than that, you know? Oh, come on. Zenu is fake? Come on. What are you talking about? <laughs> David, look, thank look you. I just want fierce politicians to keep their bullshit out of our laws and out of our schools. Keep the truth out there. You know, if they want to believe, fine, but don't bring it to the rest of us and keep it out of laws, keep it out of politics. You know, mm -hmm. I was very annoyed at the trumpet inauguration when they were mentioning Jesus Christ. I mean, I, I'm, I strongly believe that separation of church and state must be enforced, and it's not happening. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that support him support him because he they think it's, his administration is a faith-based administration, Yeah, that's okay. which is not. When you look at it, he's basically... They're for self-serving purposes, reducing taxes for the extremely wealthy. Yep. And uh, a lot of them are claiming, well, atheists shouldn't be around. And by the way, there's 11 states where atheists are not allowed to run for office. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of them are claiming that atheists have no morals, that we have no dignity, that we're not good people. But come on. When did believing in God ever stop a politician from deception? Or a yeah. priest from molesting a child. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they really need to get their heads out of their asses, in my opinion. I totally Fully agree. agree. <laughs> Damien, thank you so much for bringing with us on the show today. But the mic is all yours, my friend. Be shameless. Plug yourself in. Plug the group. Uh, tell us what's coming on uh, for, for Predators and where you guys will be playing. And uh... Well, our next album is going to be called Castles in the Sky. And that's oh, a good atheist song that I wrote. Um, atheism all the way and um, it's a good album cover which I painted it's a floating castle Ooh. it's really cool with a cool background and uh, before that one comes out we're doing a live album which will be called Till Death Do Us Part wow <laughs> <laughs> and it will feature a combination of songs from the first two albums there we go. and uh, we're not going to do any of the new songs because we want that to be a surprise when yeah, totally. the third album comes out and look, thanks for everything. 
keep it loud, play our records, and tell everyone to buy our records. All right? <laughs> Fair we want to be bigger than Sabbath. Let's put it that way. <laughs> and we can. You can. We keep it loud. absolutely can. I love the attitude. David, before I let you go, I gotta have you say, Hi, this is Damien Lee Thor of Predator, and I took a left in the valley. All right. Hello, this is Damien Lee Thor from Predator, and I took a left at the valley. Keep Woo! it loud. Perfect. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> and that was Damien Lee Thor of Predator. He's amazing. Absolutely. He's like my new hero, that guy. My yeah. God, he's got so much talent. An activist, mm-hmm. and, and he's a using journalist, it and for a teacher. Positive messages. Exactly. And, so, and being something in the world that isn't there. So, for people who need that specific message yes. in that music, it's yes. so perfect. I, I think uh, we've done these kind of shows before, where we had uh, the last uh, artist we had, like that was Shelly Siegel. Oh, Remember love Shelly Siegel? Love, love Shelly Siegel. And um, I think uh, in the atheist movement, we have so much intellectual yeah. uh, caliber people. That's great. But the artists are needed too. Because yes. the artists do speak to the emotional side of people. Which, you know what? Let's face it. When you're a, a Christian, half of them stay Christians because of that. Yeah. They're uh, like emotionally that's, that's invested. one of the reasons why people go to church. Like That's one yes. of the things I miss most about church is the music. The, yeah, the, and the, the music was pretty boring, but I I enjoyed it while I was there. The, the, uh, you still have the Christmas music. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Christmas the community music the com- is amazing. The community of the church, right? Is is mm-hmm. what's what we kind of missed, right? So yeah. that's gonna be so. That's great. I'm I'm glad that we have a new friend and a new artist that does that and works yes. on that on that subject. Yeah. And for Christ's sake, the guy is super super talented. Mm-hmm. So I totally look forward to hearing from him again especially yeah when their new album comes out i am super excited for that yeah absolutely it's gonna be great and mm-hmm. uh we'll, i'm sure we'll have him back on the show eventually definitely i will have to um send amber a link to his music yeah, she likes that kind of music She'll she does it. well thank you so much ladies for being on the show and thank you to all of you for listening today and uh, hope we were entertaining and uh, diverting for you yes Coming up, actually, I'm not going to go on that because next week is our Halloween special. (laughs) So let's just focus on that. That's going to be interesting. My story is done. I just just need to record some of the effects. I'm excited. You have a story too, right? I do. I I didn't create my own because the one I was going to, it was a little heavier than what I was. Like, it's very emotional for me in writing it. Mm -hmm the process and I wasn't in the right mental space so I had to step back from writing it so next year it's going to be amazing <laughs> fair enough fair yeah. enough we'll have some more stories and then Nancy should be back too so that'll yes. be great and uh, you know what instead of uh, finishing with our usual song uh, let's uh, put one more so of, uh, this song we're going to play is my favorite absolutely okay. let's put one from uh, Damien there and his uh, album yeah. what are we uh, fi- um, closing the song Die Not My Hopes Die Not My Hopes it's beautiful it All is right. thank you guys until next time yeah rock out <laughs>